Here's a video breakdown of how I made this cute fluffy monster in about an hour and a half. I start the project by dragging in a reference image that I drew. The final image ended up being quite different, but it was a good starting point. I did a front and side image, but I probably only needed to do a front in this case because it was that sort of model that you don't need both. Once the references are in place, I can then start adding basic primitives to blob out the shape as I call it. It doesn't really matter what shape these are, as long as you have them slightly overlapping because then you can remesh them when you join them together and then start sculpting them. Anything that's repeated like fingers or toes, just produce one and then you can copy it nice and easily. Also, if your model is asymmetrical, start by modeling it in a symmetrical way and then change it later on. So I'm starting with the biggest shape with the sculpt, go into sculpt mode, remesh it so it's fairly fine, but not too detailed, and then start sculpting out that major shape. To sculpt the fingers, I had to join those two blobs together and then start sculpting out the sort of fingers or claws, I should say. Again, notice I'm not going particularly detailed. I'm keeping it fairly simple. You could even do this with box modeling quite easily. And once I've got one finger, I can easily copy it for the rest of the hand. And I do exactly the same for the toes. The toes were very slightly different to the fingers, so I did model them separately, but you could have probably just copied those fingers over to the toes and that would have worked fine. And again, when that toe's finished, I copy it and reproduce it for the rest of the foot. At this point, I select all those objects, join them together, and then do a little bit of a sculpt to tidy up the joins. You do have to make sure that your fingers are spread apart a little bit so you don't get too much overlap, especially when you're remeshing. Now I'm starting to add a sort of secondary level of detail to the main character's head by modeling some gums. Still keeping it nice and simple, then I use an icosphere, put it in the middle for a tongue, and use the snake hook tool to kind of pull it out and give it this tongue shape. I do a little bit of a tidy up with the sculpt, but again, it's fairly straightforward. The next stage is to put some teeth in, so I get an icosphere again and just pull it out and make it into a tooth shape. Again, I just work on one and I'll repeat that across the model. It's helpful to move the object center and use snapping so you can easily position them. And it's fun just to rotate a few and make them look a little bit weird and wacky. I tried out doing loads of teeth to start with and then reduced them because it looked a bit simpler and nicer. I used a mirror modifier to mirror them across the other side and I keep that on all the way through and did a little bit of editing on the legs. At this point I'm reasonably happy so I can start working on the asymmetry, so changing the size of the eyes. Incidentally they're icospheres, it's much easier to do an eye with an icosphere because you can actually use colour slots to texture them. Because of all the sculpting detail the poly count is fairly high, not astronomical, but I do go in and remesh a lot of the objects with the quad remesher. It's helpful to have a low poly count for things like texture painting or any rigging that I might want to do, especially if you want to put this into some sort of game I suppose. I use link duplicates for all the teeth. That way if I want to make any changes, it updates on all of them, especially when it comes to text painting, I'll only need to text paint one. If you like what you're watching and you want to learn in detail how to do what I'm showing you here, then try out my character pack courses. Three amazing courses for only $30. Check out the discount link in the description. Then I start working on the colors. Like I say, the eyes only need to be texture slots, so I can just select faces and assign a material to those. Gave the tongue a nice shiny red color and I think I put some sort of slight noise texture on it as well to give it a little bit of bumpiness. I wanted an element of cuteness to this monster so I thought fairly carefully about the colors, trying to make them sort of ice creamy type of colors. Fairly bright and vivid but a little bit pastely as well. It's at this point I thought the tongue was a bit boring so I thought I'd bring that over to the side and make it sort of hang out of his mouth like a slobby dog. The snake hook brush and the grab brush were really important for this and obviously a bit of remeshing every now and again to smooth things out. I felt the character was really coming together at this point, just a little bit more tidy up and sculpting on the tongue for example, here's where I put the bump material and it was really starting to work. This is the point where I started to work on the hair and for the new hair system you need to make sure you have a UV map for it so you have to unwrap it first and then you can start playing around with these hair textures and things. I texture painted a black and white mask so that I could say where I wanted the hair to be and where I didn't want it to be. I also used vertex paint to paint in the color of the inside of the mouth and then a different color for the outside. Vertex paint is currently more comfortable to use than the texture painting tools, it's much easier. The texture painting in Blender hasn't been updated for quite a while so it's a little bit dated. And at this point it was just a matter of 
playing around with the hair and enjoying myself with the different settings. It took a long time to work out what different things did. And to be honest, I still don't really know. You just kind of tinker and play and have some fun. That's sometimes a little bit of a problem when these new things come out. It takes so long to figure out what all the different things mean. And they always have very confusing technical terms, which I really do not find easy to understand. But generally, this is quite a fun experience of playing around. For all the other bits, like the claws, the feet and so forth, I just use basic texture painting. It's kind of quick and easy to just to quickly unwrap it and paint onto them. I could have again used the vertex painting, but when you've got a lower poly shape, which the hands and feet certainly were, it's sometimes easier to use texture painting than it is the vertex painting. I use texture painting for the teeth as well. And again, because they're linked duplicates, you only have to paint one and they all update. And I gave it sort of a yellowy tinge to make it look a little bit more teeth-like. It's helpful to have a tiny bit of realism there. So going pure white can feel a bit fake and you lose the personality and character of your characters. The lighting setup is really simple. It's just one big light over the top of him. And I do change the pose a little bit, but I haven't included that. That's just moving objects around. So there we have it, one cute fluffy monster. I hope you enjoy these videos. Let me know your thoughts, any questions you have in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.